<clears throat> hacking cars is a hobby, not a profession for you. Is that right? Correct. <laughs> Why cars? Why hack cars? <laughs> um, I've always wanted a car that I could have computers in, like since a kid. And I've always tried to, like, my, my first car, which is a, an Infinity, I tried to put extra things into it. And, and you're only limited in what you can modify, and it was frustrating. And then along comes the Tesla, and it's like, this car has everything I want in it. It's not a car. It's a computer on a go-kart. It's a data center on a go-kart. <laughs> a data I mean, center? You have a Roadster? No, no, no. I, I borrow other people's and dismantle them. Oh, do you? <laughs> I drive a Model X, and I was just talking. It's funny that you should say that, because I was just talking to my wife, who wants to get an electric car this fall. And uh, I said, well, the Model 3 will be out. She said, I'm not buying a beta vehicle. She doesn't <laughs> like my Model X. Oh, you did the Actually, talk on it. Oh, no, that was, that was somebody else. Yeah, but no, that was me. That's um, Is that your pseudonym? But, oh, he wrote an article about your talk. I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Oh, that's cool. So um, what can I do with my Tesla? It's basically a data center on wheels, so the sky's the limit. Would you like me to customize the wallpaper? Do you want the <laughs> yes. song? To, do, do you want the horn to play an ice cream tune every yes. time you press the button? <laughs> I could do that. I want La Cucaracha. <laughs> no problem. You could do that, really? Yeah. Yep. What's the OS? Uh, it's Ubuntu. It's, a, it's not just Linux. It's Ubuntu. Yep. And how do you get into it? That's where it gets a little tricky. I mean, it's, it's a customized version of Ubuntu, yeah. so... There are a few secrets. Um, getting into it, there's a couple of routes. There's a physical Ethernet cable, which you can plug into. You're kidding. You Where's to... the Ethernet port? <laughs> uh, it's hidden just to the driver's side. If you pull the trim away, you'll see this kind of no. weird circular port. It's, it's disguised to look like something different. I think it's called an MJ11. <laughs> oh, an but MJ it's actually 11. just an industrial. It's just an industrial. You, you have no idea. What, one of the downsides of hacking is sitting there flicking through hundreds of thousands of pages of yeah. parts diagram. Yeah. To work out which part this thing came out of yep. and maybe identify the thing from the part. Yep. So, yep. Um, but once you plug into it, if you can work out what the password system is, which is kind of a, a hidden challenge thing where it asks you to identify yourself, then it will let you have access. But unfortunately, immediately phones home and tells Elon that you've done this. And you think it, so? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it does. And then, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really. <laughs> no, no, 100. percent You've not been the caught. Only, the only thing, I, the only reason I was caught was I demoed that you could drive a Tesla with an iPhone in front of Elon and JB. Oh my God! But there's, but they sent all this telemetry back. I would think that one of the things they would say is somebody just logged in. I guess they wouldn't necessarily correlate to that to whether you were in the service center. So they do send a ton, a ton of telemetry, but you remember is it's a 4G connection. Right. So they're limited in terms right. of how much telemetry they can right. send back. Right. So they send all the car stuff back. But they don't so, send logs, system logs back, things like that. No, but they're sending stuff like, you know, what's he doing with the accelerator pedal? Well, what's I know he doing they know that. With? Yeah, because we had right. a problem and they said, well, let me look at the log. No, you didn't. No, you see. And, and of course, every time there's a crash, they say, well, he didn't yep. have autopilot on. They know the second you press your brakes, but right. they don't know the second you break into one of they their machines. <laughs> And one of the side effects of breaking into the Tesla was we actually, when we didn't make too big a deal of this because we wanted to give Tesla time to respond, um, we found access to systems inside the Tesla factory from the car. Oh, that's not good. Uh, no, and obviously we didn't do too much with them because the last thing we want to do is like make a $100 million robot start throwing cars at people or something. Um, but what I did see what systems were connected to the kind of area that we deemed to be authorized to see. And there was some really odd stuff including one server, which we still don't know today what it does. All it's called is Knights Who Say. Me! Nee. Yeah, if you connect to it, that's all it does. It, it goes, floods nee. you with me. Nee. <laughs> it may be the entire purpose of that server. <laughs> Might be the most important part of the auto autonomous <laughs> driving system that we know. We just don't know. <laughs> I do love the geeky sense of humor that... Uh, Tesla, everything Tesla does is... I, I think Tesla is an amazing company. Their car was, hands down, the hardest car for me to hack in the market. And I've played around with a few now. Interesting. They thought about security. Good. They put in place controls that you would expect to see in a normal office, not inside a car. Interesting. And they've left the, the future open so they can put in, in, in security that will make other cars look like, like jokes. They have That's a good a chance of becoming the Apple of the autonomous world, so long as they keep security on, on the top priority. Right. 
Well, that's a huge relief, frankly. They're not just they're, just, they're not putting all the the telematics in the same CAN bus as the as the uh, car's uh, brake system and things like that. Which is what everyone else has done. I know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we can only afford one network in this car. I mean, I was dealing with with uh, inspecting one vehicle and then looking around, and basically the guy <laughs> wasn't sure. The designer obviously wasn't sure which CAN bus to get up to. So he hooked it up to all of them. Because <laughs> you've got a vulnerable system. Like, someone might break into this. What do I connect it to? Everything. Just Every, to be anything. sure. Anything and everything. <laughs> wow. It's like, hey. how, do you, how do you send a brake signal on this one? How do you not send a brake signal? <laughs> this thing how has, much storage does a Tesla have? Uh, a lot. It has, really? Uh, Two Ubuntu systems, so the 7-inch cluster is a Ubun separate Ubuntu system. The 17-inch touchscreen is another Ubuntu system. Really? And that has a free RTOS system bolted onto the back of it. Um, so you've got these two Ubuntu systems with an RTOS gateway that then seals the connection to the CAN bus, and then all the stuff hanging off the CAN bus behind Oh, that's it. nice. That's something most car manufacturers don't do, right? The CAN bus oh. just is a pipe pipeline to all the information everywhere. Exactly. They actually yeah. thought... Like, and you can only send sort of certain stored procedures through. So I can send a command that says wind the window down. But if I try to say and send a command that says wind the window up even though it's up, the car won't do anything. Yeah. If I try to sell the car a command to say apply the handbrake when you're at 40 miles an hour, Eeks. it won't do it. The safety mode kicks in. Uh, the car slows down. You kind of lose control. Things shut down. And you're able to pull it over to the side. If nice. I switch the engine off at speed, all of the safety systems remain functional, and you can guide the car to the side of the road. Very few cars have that feature, and I wanted to test it. And I also want to see, like, okay, you've got some security controls. How long before I can get all the way around? <laughs> Always a challenge. Did you? Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> but not every guy trying to break into your car is going to be someone with my sort of skills. Thank you know? God. <laughs> I, I said the same thing when I hacked Apple Touch ID on, on, the, on the, the first two phones that had it. They looked at me and they're like, why did you do it? I said, it was not to prove that Apple Touch ID is broken. It was just to show you that it's not a perfect security measure. Just like keys. I can pick locks, right. but we still use them. Why? Right. Because your average criminal on the street isn't going to have that kind of skill. He's just going to break a window. And... Yeah, it's well, I've always kind of said that, that really, uh, certainly that's the case with keys. They're more like a security suggestion. Yeah. It's an indicator that you don't want somebody to come in, and that if they come in, they'll be breaking the law. But it isn't really an effective deterrent. You must be this tall to ride, is what I've been saying. And if they're tall enough, fair enough. That's why I've got insurance for. <laughs>